In this video, we will explore the operating pressures of the R290 refrigerant, in a small commercial freezer, the components of the equipment, and its functioning. On screen, we observe the cooling circuit of the freezer, which operates with R290 refrigerant. The R290 refrigerant, enters the evaporator in a liquid state, at a pressure of 21 pounds per square inch. The equivalent value of this evaporator pressure, in bars, is 1.44 bar. With this pressure, the R290 in the evaporator reaches a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius. With this low temperature, and the assistance of the fan, the heat from the products inside the equipment quickly transfers to the R290 refrigerant, causing it to evaporate. As the R290 refrigerant absorbs the heat from the stored products, they cool down, allowing for preservation. The heat from the products transfers to the R290 refrigerant in the evaporator, causing the refrigerant to progressively change from a liquid to a gaseous state. The R290, now in a gaseous state and with a slight increase in temperature called superheating, is suctioned by the compressor. For this case, let's assume that the temperature of the R290 refrigerant in a gaseous state, at the evaporator's exit, is minus 15 degrees Celsius. This means that the R290 refrigerant changes from minus 20 degrees Celsius to minus 15 degrees Celsius, resulting in a superheating of 5 degrees Celsius in this equipment. Although the temperature undergoes a slight change, the same does not happen with the pressure, and we can approximate, and say that the pressure of the R290 at the evaporator's exit is practically the same, it still amounts to 21 pounds per square inch. The R290, now in a vapor state, moves to the compressor through the suction pipe, which we can identify as the thickest pipe of the compressor. The pressure and temperature of the R290 refrigerant, increase significantly in the compressor. The pressure of the R290 at the compressor's exit, reaches a value close to 210 pounds per square inch. The temperature of the R290 at the compressor's exit, may be around 60 degrees Celsius. In the condenser, the refrigerant must release the heat absorbed from the products inside the equipment, and the energy absorbed in the compressor. This heat must be expelled in the condenser into the environment. This heat dissipation process is favored by the high pressure that the R290 refrigerant gained in the compressor. As the R290 refrigerant loses heat in the condenser, it changes from a gaseous state to a liquid state. The pressure of the R290 refrigerant in the condenser, remains at 210 pounds per square inch, but the R290 significantly decreases its temperature. This decrease in temperature of the R290, in the condenser allows the refrigerant to transition, from a vapor state to a liquid state. The R290, now in a liquid state, and at a temperature close to the ambient temperature, exits the condenser, and moves to the capillary tube to restart the cycle. In the capillary tube, the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant decrease significantly, so it returns to the initial pressure of 21 pounds per square inch and minus 20 degrees Celsius. The R290, now in a liquid state, with low pressure and temperature, returns to the evaporator to start the refrigeration cycle again. On the screen, we are displaying other absolute pressure values, usually used with R290. The main drawback of R290, is its classification as a flammable refrigerant. However, as the refrigeration equipment where it is used does not have such high refrigeration capacities, and R290 has a significant cooling capacity, Small commercial equipment requires very little R290 refrigerant, 
reducing the risk significantly. The R290 gas, being composed of a single gas, can be recharged or introduced into the equipment, either in a liquid or gaseous phase, as this is indifferent. R290 is compatible with any type of oil, however, it is advisable to follow the manufacturer's recommendations for the compressor. The main risk when performing corrective maintenance on equipment with R290 occurs when performing any welding. In this regard, it is recommended not to carry out this procedure without having previously performed a complete vacuum of the equipment with a vacuum pump carrying out this process for several minutes. With gas expulsion to the outside and paying special attention to possible accumulations of R290 in the capillary tube.